so we have already discussed about uh, hemerythrin now we are going to talk about the hemocyanin so hemocyanin also very important here we will talk about the deoxy form first deoxy hemocyanin as well as oxy hemocyanin so in the deoxy hemocyanin so both the copper units are present in plus one oxidation state and three histidine atoms are attached nitrogen of histidine nitrogen of histidine it's like this so this is then the deoxy form so whereas in case of oxy form we have copper in the plus 2 oxygen state and the oxygen is binding like this and histidine and histidine like this and histidine so this is the reversible process sorry irreversible uh, reversible process so <coughs> we'll see the deoxy form is colorless but oxy form is blue colored so why deoxy form is colorless so here we have a copper in a plus one oxidation state plus one means 4s0 3d10 so this is a d10 configuration so here dd transition is completely ruled out because it is a d10 configuration so dd transition is not possible here whereas here we have a copper plus two means d9 configuration so here dd transition is possible so because of that uh, we get a blue color here and another thing if we see the uh, shape of this compound so it looks like a trigonal planar shape trigonal planar shape and another important thing in this case is the copper copper distance here is 4.6 angstroms whereas in case of oxy form the copper copper distance is 3.6 angstroms so what is happening here it's almost reducing by the one angstrom so as we uh, seen in case of heme erythrin so what happened in heme erythrin when oxygen is converted into the when double bond o is converted into peroxo form that time there is a one electron transfer from this iron as well as this iron so i have, I have explained uh, this mechanism clearly in the hemos heme erythrin uh, uh, video you just go go through that video so while what is happening here the distance between these two oxygen is decreasing when the electrons are transferring from each copper unit to the uh, to the oxygen okay so this copper is giving one electron to this oxygen and this copper is giving one electron to this oxygen so because of that the oxygen state changes from the plus one to plus two oxygen state so in this process in this process what is happening the distance between two copper units are uh, decreasing and uh, this is showing the blue color and in the uv spectroscopy we will see a two band spectra for this so one is at uh, 345 nanometer another one is at 570 nanometer okay and here what we need to remember each copper is giving one electron to the one oxygen and next so this we can characterize by EPR spectroscopy also EPR spectroscopy also because this compound is having a D10 configuration so this is inactive in EPR spectroscopy since it's having D9 configuration so this is active in EPR spectroscopy and one more thing I would like to tell here that when we have a uh, this form so this form is called as the new n2 n2 peroxo so in examination point of view they may ask how oxygen is binding in case of copper in case of hemocyanin that is new n2 n2 peroxo form so when we do a electrophilic substitution reaction on this electrophilic substitution reaction and it exists in the equilibrium with this 
whatever compound will form that will exist in equilibrium with this in this case both the uh, so both the coppers will be converted into plus 3 okay Okay, both the coppers will be converted into plus 3 oxygen state. So this form when oxygen is binding this way, so this undergoes electrophilic substitution reactions. So this further abstract H plus H plus uh, proton, proton it will abstract. And another form of oxygen binding also there. So this form of oxygen binding. So here the lone pairs are there. So because of that it undergoes a nucleophilic substitution reactions. Okay. I'm just telling this uh, just like uh, when we have like this they may ask uh, in case of hemocyanin which kind of reactions are feasible so here electrophilic electrophilic uh, reactions are feasible because it's binding to the peroxyl linkage and when it uh, when oxygen binds in this manner in that case nucleophilic substitution reactions are possible so this is about the hemocyanin so if you have any doubts about uh, hemocyanin and you can uh, write in the comment box and the in the and the species which are having a hemocyanin as oxygen carrier we call them as a blue bodies because the oxy form it looks like a uh, in a blue in a color so because of that we call it as a blue body and hemocyanin uh, will have neither uh, heme or cyanide heme or cyanide so hemocyanin neither uh, wait, hemocyanin will have neither heme or cyanide so this is about the uh, hemocyanin so if you have any doubts you can write in the comment box and if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and also forward to your friends thank you